I've worked a little bit more with the shader glow attributes and I've got a look that I think is pretty good. I can go back through the history of earlier versions all the way back to the first one with the default shader and shadows. So it's come quite a ways. I wouldn't say it's perfect. You might notice that the particles above the horizon are very bright and these on the ground are darker. It's simply because the background of the sky is brighter. I can't really do much about that within Maya using the Shader Glow node. Really I'd want to render the particles out as a separate layer and then composite them in a post-production program. That would be out of scope for this particular exercise. We're really only focusing on particles. But you should know that it's very easy for you to just simply render the particles on their own with an alpha channel and layer them in a compositing program to get a more consistent color or look. Before we even begin to think about rendering, we want to create a particle disk cache. And that is a way to sort of store the particles on disk so that they will play back consistently in the viewports, so that they will render predictably, and to reduce rendering time. So I'll go ahead and close this window. Currently, there is no particle disk cache. And if I play, it's fine. But if I rewind through, you'll see I get kind of strange results. Hmm, OK. I'm going to create that particle disk cache, and I also want to pay attention to my shot because it looks like the particles haven't quite left the frame. So I'll add a little bit more to my timeline down here. Let's say 120 frames. Rewind. So if I'm ready to sign off on this shot, then I'll go ahead and build that disk cache. It's in the Dynamics menu set under Solvers, Create Particle Disk Cache Options. And within here, you will see the cache directory. And by default, that will be taken from the name of your current scene file. And this is going to be the name of the directory that's created in your current project's particles directory. You have a choice of baking all or just the selected particle systems. I'll go ahead and do all. Click Create, and it plays back so quickly and calculates so quickly that we didn't even get to see it. But now it has, in fact, been saved onto disk, and I can scrub through here. And that's very important. If you fail to do this, then your performance in the viewport will be strange, your rendering may be strange, and the rendering will take longer. Because if we're down here at frame 60, let's say, Maya has to calculate all the frames leading up to that. So as your sequence gets longer, each frame takes longer to render. And you don't need that. So just build a disk cache. Let's take a look at it really quickly. I've already got it open in another window. I'll bring that over. Here's my current project, the Particles folder. And you will see there are several in here already. And the one that I want right now is the one that says Particles Wand 06. And inside here are a lot of PDC files. And these are the disk cache files, one for each frame. And you'll see as the number of particles increases, the file size increases. So these aren't very big. They level out at about 130 kilobytes. If I had tens or hundreds of thousands of particles in my scene, my disk cache files would become very large, sometimes in the realm of hundreds of gigabytes. So watch out. It could actually come to bite you if you're not careful. You could create a disk cache that would take up your entire hard drive. Just a word to the wise. This one's trivial because there's hardly anything going on in here. We are ready to render. Let's go into the Render Settings window. And I've set most of these already in the scene file that I gave you. But you can check in on them. For example, in the Maya Software tab, we have Production Quality Rendering. And in the Common tab, You'll see I've placed in the name of a folder and a file for the sequence you'll create. And you'll see a preview of that uh, file folder structure here. In fact, let me bring this over a little bit so you can see more of it. So this is the path, current user documents Maya projects, 
project name images is the output folder and within the images folder I'm creating a new folder called magic wand and then a sequence of files also named magic wand and I've chosen TIFF as my output format. Let's try another one actually. Let's try PNG. I'm favorable to that. You will see the frame animation extension convention. That means how are we naming and numbering these files and I've chosen name.number.extension. That's the safest. Scrolling down I've got my frame range. It's set from frame 1 to 120 but if you've done a different animation, of course, you'll need to change this range accordingly. Camera 1 has been made renderable, and I've also got a resolution of 640 by 360. So all of that looks good. Close the window, save the scene. Go into the rendering menu set, and then choose render batch render. If you wish, you can go into the options and you can choose whether you want to use all the processors or cores on your system. Click Batch Render and Close. The only feedback you'll get from Maya is that down in the lower right hand corner you see some numbers flashing. This is going pretty quickly on my machine. I can open the script editor by clicking on this button and it'll show me more information. But we don't get to see the frames as they're being drawn. We can go into our project. I've got that window as well. And in the images folder, we should start to see some files appear. Images, magic wand, and here they are. And I like the PNG format because it gives me the ability to see icons in Windows. So we're seeing it as it's being rendered. Move that back. So it'll just take a moment. When it's finished, we can look at it and combine it into a movie.